People with depression whose illness had resisted traditional treatments have taken part in a trial using the hallucinogenic compound found in magic mushrooms. Twelve people were given small amounts of psilocybin in controlled experiments, the equivalent of just a few mushrooms. All 12 patients reported that the compound relieved their depression, in some cases, for as long as three months. Many of these patients have been depressed for over 10 years. They hadn't responded to other treatments. They hadn't responded to psychotherapy. And then you found within a few hours of this high-dose psilocybin treatment that their mood was better. And this effect went continued. In fact, the biggest effect was at two months. So it's quite remarkable to see a single treatment producing an enduring effect at two months. In some people, they stayed well for up to six months. Well, joining me now, Nigel Campbell, the Associate Director of Communications at Rethink Mental Illness. Very good afternoon to you. Um, what do you make of this research? Well, I think we'll all agree this is quite exciting stuff, isn't it? Um, uh, it's really important that we develop some new treatments for people who aren't responding to the current therapies for depression. You know, it's going to affect, depression is going to affect up to one in ten of us uh, in our lifetime. And so it's incredibly important that we find new ways to tackle this uh, really troubling complaint. I mean, I, I think perhaps a natural assumption of many people would be that um, illegal substances, drugs, um, were uh, added to problems of mental illness. Well, of course, uh, substances such as cannabis and cocaine and heroin really can add to your problems if you already have a mental illness, can make it a lot harder to treat. And if you don't have a mental illness, you could be playing Russian roulette uh, with your, uh, your mental health if you take them. But let's remember, this is not magic mushrooms. This is a highly purified ingredient, uh, for this psychedelic uh, ingredient, a very pure chemical indeed. And this study was about safety, um, not about really about efficacy um, and how effective it is. Uh, it was only a handful of patients. And what this uh, shows us is that it's safe to take so that it can then go on to be uh, tried in much larger scale trials. How much of a problem is it, Nigel, uh, people are just not showing any signs of improvement with the traditional uh commonly used uh, medications? It is a real problem. Uh, up to one in five people, we think, uh, who have depression aren't responding to the current range of therapies. And so for them, there's very little out there at the moment. And it just makes it even more important that we invest a lot more money in research um, to identify new promising treatments and to get them accelerated uh, towards the market. Money and all, also impetus, a uh, huge royal involvement this week in mental health. Uh, what does that contribute? I think it's a hugely important step forward. Uh, the, uh, the Royals have uh, launched their new anti-stigma campaign and uh, at Rethink Mental Illness and at MIND we partner with a fellow anti-stigma campaign to help uh, take away the discrimination that people with mental health all too often experience. And so it's brilliant, it's a huge step forward we think. And uh, the more the merrier, uh, the more we can get to a place where people don't experience that problem when they discover that they have a mental health problem then the better we'll all be. Um, the safety and effectiveness of, of any new therapy obviously has to be at the forefront. What, what sort of time scale do you expect or, or what are the procedures of, of where things progress from here to how we get to a point where you might be able to say to, to people that you deal with, uh, give this a go? Well, uh, I think it's quite a long road and often when we find new treatments for all kinds of, uh, of the diseases, uh, there's a great excitement, a great flurry um, in the media and, and then uh, it all seems far too long to wait till it actually becomes a reality. So it's going to be a number of years, but I think in the interim, it's really important to invest a lot more money in research uh, to mental health problems. You know, at the moment, it's quite shocking. Only 5.5% uh, of the UK research budget is spent on mental health. I think that needs to go up far further uh, because, who knows, we've had a little glimpse here into the future, which could be really promising. Just think what might happen if we spent some more money on it. Well, and as we've been hearing this afternoon, actually, this is not that expensive uh, if it does prove to be a good treatment but the legal hurdles that have had to be uh, climbed over have just been horrendous. I mean, th th there is that issue as well, that the legality of, of this, the magic mushroom or the, the compound in it, in, in order to treat it. Could authorities, could the government, the health service help you more in, in speeding up those processes? 
Well, we know that the Home Office has been incredibly helpful in uh, enabling this trial to take place with uh, a very pure form of the drug. Um, and we've seen in other areas of medicine, such as MS, uh, where a very purified uh, cannabis-related uh, substance has been used very effectively. So it can happen, um, and uh, we would encourage the authorities to collaborate so that we can make this, uh, maybe explore its, its potential some more. Nigel, there will be... Um apprehension that people will see this in the news today um, who who perhaps have depression and think I'll give that a go what do you say to them please don't uh, this was a small scale trial it was on a very purified substance uh, under clinical conditions um, it, there's no way that we would encourage anyone to go out and pick mushrooms or take any other form of, of substance which hasn't been prescribed to you by a doctor Nigel Campbell thank you very much for talking to us this afternoon Two men have been arrested.